let's get into it. Let's get into it. A lot of people have been talking about this uh, Biden uh, legislation that's being worked on right now, right? So how is this going to affect us? So before I jump into it, I'm going to let a few more people come into the room before we get this thing started. How's everybody doing? If y'all can hear me, leave a comment in the comment section so I know that I am good. This is going to be a good one. Um, I'm going to give it like a few more minutes to let a few more people in. But there's been a lot of rumblings online, right, about this uh, Joe Biden plan. All of you have been sending me messages all day long. So now it's time that we discuss. It's time. Classic Clean says targeting black e-commerce businesses. <laughs> Lexus, how's it going? Seen a, a good topic? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a good good topic. A lot of people have been talking about it. People have been on me all day. So I literally had to stop what I was doing and say, you know what, I'm going to come in here and we're going to discuss this whole thing because this has been um, a popular thing that's been circulating around. Hey, Leslie, how are you? But now that we have a few people in the room, we can get this thing started. So if y'all were in my stories recently, I posted an article that was titled Under the Biden Plan, the IRS would know a lot more about your bank accounts, right? And first off, before I get started, how many of you have been hearing about this? How many of you have been seeing this circulate on Instagram today? Let me know in the comment section. Um, there's been other people that have been posting it and they've been talking about it, right? And a lot of people are panicking. People are worried. They're trying to figure out how is this going to affect each of us, right? Um, the first thing I will say is that it's, this looks like this is, well, first of all, before I jump into that, this bill has not been passed by the House or Senate. So this isn't something that's in effect as of yet, right? So let's get that clear. This isn't something that's in effect as of yet. This has been something that's been presented and now the House and Senate have to pass it before it actually goes in into play, right? But essentially this plan, and I have the article in front of me and I can read some clips of it, but um, it says, President Biden announced the American Families Plan which is designed to grow the middle class and expand benefits of economic growth to all Americans, right? Um, this plan includes a lot, li a lot to like, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, right? Um, but by any means, by any measure, excuse me, the amount of benefits being proposed is staggering, which begs the question, how will we pay for all of this, right? So the, the article starts out by saying there's a lot of good things in this plan, but how is all this going to be paid for, right? So now it turns into is gonna be paid for by increasing IRS enforcement, right? By increasing reporting obligations for financial institutions and by raising taxes on the wealthy, right? So when we look at um, increasing reporting obligations for financial institutions, that means that a lot of banks and a lot of financial institutions are going to now be um, forced to report to the IRS different information that they haven't been reporting right so that would mean things such as how much money is circulating in your bank account right the article goes on to talk about transactions that are over six hundred dollars are going to be looked at right the the bank is going to be required to report a lot of these transactions in aggregate to the irs so you know what that means right if you have a bunch of money in your account or even not, not a bunch, let's say $1,000 and you withdraw that money, they wanna know what happened with that withdrawal. They wanna know what are you doing specifically with that, right? Um, if you have, let's say someone gives you a gift of 50 grand, that would be a, a lovely gift by the way, but if someone was to give you $50,000, that they would want a piece of that. They would wanna know what's going on, where did that, that come from, right? So. For a lot of business owners, this is something that 
is being, I, I don't want to say being targeted, but this is something that a lot of business owners are going to have to be aware of because right now there's a lot of leeway with how we report the money that we make and the money that we spend. You literally could go on a tax return and lie and say, instead of $100,000, I made $1,000, right? And there's, if there was no kind of merchant collecting the payment that you were supposed to report and you were getting paid all cash, let's say you were a laundromat, um, a club, and you were getting paid in cash and you don't deposit that money, well, you deposited the money into your bank account, but instead of saying that I deposited $100,000 that I earned from running my club, instead of saying that you put that on your tax return, you now say, I really only made $10,000. There was no way for them to really verify that. But now that this money is hitting your bank account, they are going to start requiring, if this gets passed, they're going to require the banks and financial institutions to report this to the IRS. So now the IRS will have this on file. So what does that mean? That means that whatever you report, and if it doesn't match what the IRS has on file, that could potentially cause an audit. So let me read some of the comments before I keep going. <coughs> Ambitious Girl 510 says, going to give CPAs more clients. Yeah, most definitely. Dominique, how are you? Claire, what's going on? Kia, how are you? Danny, what's going on? Crystal, what's going on? Um, this is, you, you can't really, like I was saying, you can't really lie anymore as a business owner, right? So this is why, you know, if you've been following me or if you've been seeing a lot of things that I post, I always talk about getting your accounting together. Why that's so important, right? Because it's like, a lot of our clients, we're trying to get them together already ahead of time. If your books and everything is already together and you're already reporting everything that you earn, then you have nothing to worry about, essentially. Even if you were to take a large amount of money out of your business, if you have the, the records behind it to show like, look, I took this money out and I that's, that was a profit that I had in my business and I took it out and I used it for myself, but I'm reporting the correct profit on my tax return, what can the IRS do? Now, if you take that money out of your business and you're using it in a different venture, let's say you want to start another business and you take $50,000 out of your bank account and you put it into a separate biz, uh, bank account, business, bank account, excuse me. Now there's a trail, right? You'll be able to explain. So it's really all about, can you explain what's going on? If you're just being real lackadaisical with your money and just pulling it out, doing whatever it is that you want, then the IRS might have a problem. Now, I do understand people will say it's my money. Why can't I do what I want with it? Right. But technically, we're supposed to be paying taxes anyways. Right. So these are things that we're supposed to already be doing. Right. So if we're already doing it. Then if IRS audit was to happen, we already have our things in order. Right. So let me see. I pray pretty E, the man with the master plan. <laughs> How are you? Tanya, how's it going? Don, what's going on, man? Ambitious Girl 510 says everyone should invest in a safe. You might as well invest in, in um, a weapon, too, if you don't already have one. <laughs> you know, because that, that's what it's looking like. Um, if y'all have been paying attention, the government, the banks... They don't like cash, right? They've been demonizing cash for a while because there's no real trace around it. Um, and if they can't trace it, then obviously they can't make money off of it. You know, um, a lot of people have been talking about how there's no more coins, right? Early on during the year 2021, there was a lot of talk about how there's, there's a coin shortage, right? So a lot of money, physical money is disappearing, right? Because they... I, I really believe that, you know, in a perfect world for the government, they want a situation where the money is all virtual. It's able to be tracked versus cash just floating around. Right. Um, what, what are y'all thoughts, though, around this? What do y'all think? I'm, I'm going to read some more of the article and touch on that. Um, another piece of the article says. Let's see. That the banks are going to have like an increased responsibility, right? So this could put a lot more pressure on banks to report everything that's going on. Right now, 
they had a reporting requirement, but it was really only for transactions over ten thousand dollars. But now they're going to have to report a lot more things. So they're going to have to really put a lot more things in place to make sure that they're tracking all this. Um, if this passes the House and Senate, right, because this still hasn't passed. This is just a bill that's been put out there by our president. And so we don't know what's going to happen in the long run. Dominique says, thanks for the facts. Felicia, how are you? Dana, how's it going? Don says, what if someone has a side cash business? <laughs> like you're, yourself, right? <laughs> oh, thank you, Felicia, for the, the badge. I appreciate you. Oh, um, <laughs> that's that's a good question. So if they have a side cash business, I mean, hey, if you if you have cash and you're not depositing it, then I don't know. I, I guess they can't see it, right? But if there's a cash shortage, cash is going to run out at some point. Have you ever tried to go to the bank to withdraw a large amount of money? I haven't ever done that, but I've seen people do it. I've seen videos. I've heard people talk about it. And what, what do they tell you whenever you try to go withdraw a large amount of money? They'll say, first off, in order for you to withdraw this kind of money, you have to call ahead. You have to let us know in advance so that we can have the money here present for you to do that. Um, a lot of times they don't let you walk out of the bank with that money um, because for their reasons, you know, they might have reasons for that. You know, a lot of times they'll say, oh, we don't have cash on hand. We need our cash available to do other things. Or so I've heard even situations where it's like, oh, we don't have the cash on hand because let's say someone is telling you to come in here to withdraw a large amount of money and they're trying to stick you up. They're trying to rob you. So we're trying to protect you from that happening. Right. But in saying that the money, the cash, there's not a real control over it, right? As time goes on, I can see that going away. I can see crypto being more popular as it is. It's already popular, but I can see it being even more popular. Um, Crystal, how are you? Don said, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> Ogo, what's going on? Courtney, how are you? Some more of the article. The article says the American Families Plan calls for banks and other financial institutions to report more than just a taxpayer's interest earned, capital gains and losses. Banks and other financial institutions would also be required to report aggregate account outflows and inflows. Right. So in other words, the IRS will know about all of your bank accounts, whether you earned income on that account or not, how much is in the account in a given year and how much was transferred in and out of the account. It is unclear how this would work, but what is clear is that this new reporting obligation will create a massive compliance effort on the part of the financial institutions. I, I said that just a moment ago, and it will eliminate a massive blind spot that the IRS is currently enduring, right? This is a big blind spot that the IRS um, has. They have no real way of tracking businesses, right? If you're an employee of a, of a company, they can track you like the money that you're earning by the business paying you, putting you as a W-2 or a 1099, and then reporting that to the IRS, right? So they can track that, but they can't really track a lot of times businesses unless you're using a merchant, like let's say PayPal, Stripe, Shopify, things like that. Whenever you're using a merchant, if y'all know, there's a reporting requirement that now these merchants, this was a few, some years back, where the merchants have to report how much money they've paid you if you've made over a certain amount of money, which is normally about $20,000, right? But if you're not, if you are, let's say you're, um, I don't want to say restaurant because restaurants do get um, card purchases, right? But what's a business where you don't have to use a merchant? Let's say real estate. Um, if the realtor or if the, the company is not 1099ing you, then you can make all this money Let's say you're doing a flip and you're not receiving a 1099 for that flip, then you can make all this money without being tracked. So essentially, the IRS barbershop, thank you. Although barbers are starting to they're starting to um, take card, <laughs> mine does for sure. But they're really trying to get rid of all the blind spots so that way they can make sure that everybody's reporting the amount of money they're supposed to be reporting, right? They're cleaning business, like Crystal said. So essentially, if you are somebody that is making money 
but your books are not together. Your books are all over the place. You're not really doing a good job of that. It's not too late. It's not too late to speak to somebody to help you out with that, right? But you want to get on a really good foot. We don't know if this bill is going to be passed, but in the event that it's passed, you want to be prepared for what might happen. You want to make sure that your stuff is in order so that way um, you don't have to fall into this. Now, a lot of people will say, if I report all of my income, won't I have to pay more taxes? Yes and no, right? So I say yes because obviously if you report more income and you don't have enough write-offs, then now you have a bigger tax bill. And I say no because now this is an opportunity for you to partner up with an accountant that specializes in tax planning and now have that you have that relationship with them, right? Because they're doing your books each month. And so now at the end of, let's say, each quarter, you can look at how much money you've made and how much you've spent on, you know, on your income statement and you see what your profit is. So let's say let's use an example of let's say the first quarter of the year, 2022. Let's say next year, first quarter, 2022, January through March, you've made one hundred thousand dollars. Now, let's say you've spent seventy five thousand dollars. That means your profit is what? Twenty five thousand dollars. Right. So what you could say is, OK, if I continue on doing what I'm doing right now with the same sales and the same expenses, that means at the end of the year, I would have made how much? Four hundred thousand dollars. And I would have spent how much? Three hundred thousand dollars. So my profit will end up being one hundred thousand dollars. Right. So now I would owe taxes based upon one hundred thousand dollars. And if you're a sole proprietor, that might end up being as high as thirty three percent. Right. So you might have a tax bill of a third of that thirty three thousand dollars. <throat> but because you were proactive and you had someone handling your books and you were tax planning, now you can say, OK, my profit is twenty five thousand at the end of the first quarter. Well, now I need to I have three more quarters to plan ahead. Right. And let's say if I need to buy more equipment, if I need to hire more people, if I need to spend more money in the business so that way I am getting things for the business that are that's needed. And at the end of the year, I don't have as high of a tax bill. Then now your profit at the end of the year might end up being, let's say, 50,000 instead of 100,000. So now you've effectively slashed your tax bill in half. But if you're going through the year and you're just going about your business, you're making your money, you're spending, but you aren't really tracking your money, then now guess what happens, right? December is coming up. December 31st is coming up. All of us, we're going to be at some party somewhere and we're going to do a countdown. We might not even be at a party. We might be at our house. We'll do a countdown and we'll say Happy New Year. As soon as you say Happy New Year and the fireworks go off, the bubbly is popped or whatever, it's now January 1st. The year is over. 2021 is a wrap. You can't do anything for 2021. So I've seen situations where people have made millions of dollars in that year. And then they come to us the next year in January or February. And they're like, hey, I need my taxes done. And then they didn't have any kind of accounting in place. We go back, we do their books and we see that, OK, you made five million dollars but you only had business expenses of a million dollars, right? So now you have a profit of $4 million, which in my previous example, what's a third of $4 million? That's about a million and some change, right? If I'm not mistaken, but it's too late. You can't really do anything. You can't go back into 2021 once you're in 2022 to say, oh, look, I need to like change this. I need to spend more money here. I need to do this. The year is already over. It's too late, right? So if the year is over and it's too late, you have to eat that. And now you have to just prepare for 2022, essentially, right? You have to change your ways. So it's so important to be proactive. It's so important to stay on top of your accounting. If you're not the one doing your accounting, Go out there and find some help. There's people out there that are really great at what they do that can help you. So that way you're not put in this predicament. But essentially with this Biden plan, they're going to track our, our money, right? If this gets passed, they're going to track our, our, our money and they're going to um, essentially know where our money's going, what's happening, right? And as your business is growing and as you're making more money within your business, it's your responsibility as the CEO of your business 
to uh, make sure that you have somebody or yourself tracking the money that you're making. Sir, can you? <laughs> Hold on. But yeah, let me read some of the comments real, real quick. Jerome, what's going on? Khadija, how are you? It's time to eat meal prep says, makes sense. How are you? Thanks for joining. Alicia, Shop Alicia Boutique. I appreciate you, Teresa, for the badge. Thank you for supporting my, my kids. That means a lot. Addy, what's going on? Um, Cena says, I run a daycare also and it's cash based. But all of my income has to be reported because my clients like that credit. I like that. I like that. I, I like that that you're doing it the right way. So you run a ta uh, daycare and you're a realtor. Nice. See, y'all be wondering why I don't go live during the day. It's because I have kids, right? <laughs> and the, the kids, they're on you. You can't really, like, focus, focus in. So my sweet spot for going live is normally at night. Um... Let's see. Let me bring Carmen on real quick since she's. Hey. Carmen, let me know if you received the um, invite. Hey. Hello. Hey, how's it going? The <laughs> filter. <Crazy>. does. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your thoughts on everything? Um, my first thought is, what did we expect for, um, <laughs> I'm also currently working, so I got to keep this on. I know I look like the telephone marketer, but I'm, uh, simultaneously on a Zoom call. But my first thoughts on Biden even proposing this is, what did we think was going to happen? If everybody all over the United States, everyone wanted to apply and request, and we, you know we had tons of fraud with PPPs and EIDLs, what was going to be the next thing that happened? If they were unable to track all these cryptocurrencies, all these hot trending, all these hot trending um, different tips for how to earn money, and then now a bigger percentage of the population are investors and entrepreneurs, what was going to come next, right? At some point, they were going to need to have some type of uh, process in place to really figure out who is actually maintaining compliance with the federal and state tax departments, right? They didn't, they're not going to lose all this money on all of these EIDLs and PPPs right. and not get reimbursed somehow, some way. They're, they're, they're going so hard that they're going to get reimbursed probably tenfold, you know, <laughs> with... <clears throat> with what they're setting in place. And they're gonna only restructure themselves so that when they do have future, you know, different government programs or federal programs to be able to issue businesses, guess what? They're not gonna go through what they do. They're gonna already know who qualifies. They're gonna send you a letter, just like child tax credit. They already knew who qualified and they sent out letters to taxpayers. They didn't have to opt in, right? And now it's, they're gonna, they're, they wanna have a bigger control of and I feel like it's especially because now a lot of our lower to middle, what normally would be our middle income classes, they're getting smart. They're learning how to become mm -hmm. investors. They're learning how to, right? they're learning how to, you know, make money on Turo plus Airbnb plus the side business, plus their W two. And when people start to get more educated, the IRS is going to need to have stronger processes in place to make sure everyone is paying their taxes. For every dollar, you pay 25 cents in taxes just for easy math. And, it, and that could go higher, what your income threshold is, or it could go lower, right? But you're going to always, always going to be the meat number. For every dollar you pay, Uncle Sam wants 25 cents. So how are they going to track all of this stuff? It's like, I feel like it was bound to happen. Not that I'm pro it, because trust me, <laughs> it's going to cause a headache for us on the accounting side of things, right? right. Because now we have to put our agenda more onto people. Hey, these things in order. And you know what these conversations are. There's so much Nobody wants to pay taxes. Everyone's looking at all these big tax deductions. And then all of a sudden, one year, they want to buy a property. And they're like, oh, wait, by the way, I have to add $100,000 in income right. for the year. Right. year. Like, how about doing things the right way, you know? Right. No, it's it's a, it's a great point. There's a few more things that 
is in this article that I do want to read for people. Um, the article also says, as things stand today, most taxpayers don't have an obligation to report how much money they have in their bank accounts, how much they've deposited, or how much they've withdrawn. Self-employed taxpayers who, like all Americans, self-report their income and deductions to the IRS are on an honor system, right? So W-2 wage earners, on the other hand, have their amount of wages reported to the IRS on their behalf. So the IRS's lack of information about the balance of the business bank account, how much was deposited, and how much was withdrawn allows the self-employed taxpayer to lie or make an honest mistake, right, about gross receipts or gross revenue. So for some self-employed taxpayers, this temptation is hard to resist, right? So cheating on taxes by taking outlandish deductions is likely to end up in IRS audit, but underreporting revenue is harder to track or identify. So by requiring banks to report highest balances and aggregate deposits and withdrawals, this plan will effectively close off the option of underreporting gross receipts or revenues for businesses and self-employed taxpayers. So th this is right. I mean, we've been doing taxes for years. Essentially, there's situations where um, somebody possibly could underreport how much money they made, right? If you are, let's say, in the real estate business and you do a bunch of flips and who you're doing the flips with, or let's say you do wholesale deals and you're not getting a 1099, you could say, hey, this is how much money I made. If you're a club and you only take cash or whatnot, you could say, this is how much money I, I made, right? Like there's certain industries to where um, or, you can pretty much say, say what? Or construction, you know, you can be right. the investor's contractor and, you know, take on a $20,000 job. Guess what? They're going to give you five, a check for five grand plus another five grand. The investor is going to expense the five grand nine times out of 10. The investor is not going to give the contractor 1099 and report that income. Then the contractor is then, and this is just one business deal, right? Then the contractor right. take that twenty thousand dollars from the five, from the four or five thousand dollar different draws, right? Five grand, then ten grand, then another five grand, equal ten, and he's gonna take that two thousand. He's gonna pay his bills with it, and nine times out of ten, he may even be undocumented, or maybe he is documented, <laughs> and he's right. probably still not gonna even uh, report that. Anymore. So now you have the investor not the investor not doing it correctly because they're not reporting income to the IRS. They're reporting it as a, as a expense when they pay their taxes, but most investors aren't giving their contract. And I know right. that was that. Then the contractor gonna take that same income and then not report it again. So then the contractor may even pay his guy, right? And then it may not get reported again on the third level and all with the money transaction so if you think about how many people or how different hands that same set of income touch and didn't get reported it's like, wow but exactly. we work for the irs so we don't necessarily want you to you know uh pay the most amount of taxes what we want most of our clients to know is hey let's do things the right way as we start to grow and scale up. because those penalties that come with with not being compliant are not fun. You know, when, when one day you get audited or even when, let's say you have a hard month and not a hard month or one day business funding and you could have been doing the right thing with your numbers for the last three years, you could have easily got a hundred grand from the bank. Easily, no questions, 150,000 from your bank that you run all your expenses from. Could have easily got that, but because you didn't do things the right way, now you you kind of set yourself up for failure. It's just a matter of learning the the code and kind of just working with your accountant, right, to make sure that can position you. We help you and you know educate. Right. So, how many people in the comments? And y'all can put this in the comment section. How many of y'all have purchased a house, and your lender has asked you questions about certain transactions in your bank account, or? How many of you had tried to purchase a house and your lender was like, hey, don't make any moves, like kind of keep everything on a standstill. Don't make any major moves, major like big money moves until we close on this this house. If you've been through that, that's it's similar to this where your transactions are going to be scrutinized. You know, um, if there's a lot of volatility 
going in and out. But at the end of the day, like we were saying, if you are doing things the right way, then you can sleep well at night. You don't have anything to really worry about. You know, like there's, you can, you'll be able to have an explanation for everything that, that happens. Even if you say, hey, I want to take $50,000 out of my business because this is my profit and I've earned it, then, hey, I mean, when you look at my tax return, it matches up. I had $50,000 of profit. I paid my, my tax or whatever. Or if I want to go do a real estate deal, if I want to take that 50 to go do a real estate deal, um, here's the, the trail. Another example that the – so this article also said, this may create problems. However, that should be considered and addressed as this plan works its way through Congress. For example, consider a young couple saving up to buy a home. All savings are put into the dream home savings account. Then when it comes time to make the down payment, the $50,000 dream home savings goes into the regular checking account, which is then wired to the seller's escrow account. Buying a home at right now is not a taxable event, right? At least not for federal income tax but selling one is. Will the IRS receive information from the financial institutions that will lead to an audit? And now you have to prove that, hey, I wasn't actually selling my home, I was buying one. So this whole thing could like, you know, it could blow over, but documentation, I think that's so important, right? If you have a job, most jobs will require you at some point to do some kind of documentation around some things, right? So that's one thing that I try to get better in, documenting as much stuff as possible. You know, yeah, right. So, so now, you, whenever you go back to things, you actually have some paperwork, some writings that can explain what happened. You know, but for those of y'all who are just coming on, you know, we're talking about um, this Biden's Families Plan Act that uh, was he he put this back in circulation back in like April, May, like at the beginning of the year. You know, but mm -hmm. I, I guess it's recirculated. And people were sending this to me in my DMs. They were like, hey, you need, like, literally about five to ten people were like, can you speak on this? Please speak on this, blah, blah, blah. So I stopped what I was doing. Because y'all know I don't really come on during this time. I'm normally on at midnight. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, you know what? Let me, let me come on before this verses start. Because I know once eight o'clock hits, I'm not going to have anybody's attention. <laughs> but no, um, Say but that not, line for those of you tuning in. Say the line again where they, he said that his his point of this plan was to um, help the middle class. What was that line you read in the beginning of the article that you're reading? Let me find it. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, President Biden announced the American Families Plan today, which is designed to grow the middle class and expand benefits of economic growth to all Americans. Mm grow the middle class and this i don't want this to turn into a politic conversation um <laughs> because you know i don't want to get hammered in the comments but i did not vote so i was not a part of that whole shebang but regardless of the fact um and i'm not pro trump but i do understand that a lot of people want to buy it in office for a lot of different reasons which i think are great reasons i think that um but I think that now we're kind of getting the back end whiplash of what it is to have, right, the Democratic Party in office, um, because they do push a lot more agendas that are more lower and middle income class focused. And yes, while we all came up in lower income families, myself included, we are trying to change the trajectory, right? Everyone online talks about generational wealth. So as we climb that ladder and now, you know, people in our back office are making laws and things harder, they're only making our climb up harder. So that's one of the kind of, I feel like, catch 22s with our, our whole back office. You know, where Trump was probably an asshole and whatever else he was, he still was very pro-business owners, you know, just adding things like the additional 20% tax break that he did when he updated the tax plan, just different things that were put in, in place for business owners to thrive, to create more jobs in the community and to do a lot of things. When you look at now Biden's changes, it's like, damn, we're making it harder for business owners to thrive. Now we have to walk, work, walk more on pins and needles because he's not for corporations, not for business owners. He's for the lower and the middle income classes. Do y'all think, and y'all can put this in the comment section, do y'all think this bill is going to pass? Let me know. Um, 
And then it's time to eat meal prep says, I wouldn't say harder. I just believe in the legal way, but that's me. I feel that. Legal legal keeps you out of, out of jail, you know, keeps you out of trouble. <laughs> um, Queen Stephanie, she said, uh, but anything over $600, they could have set it higher. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I wonder why. I, I wonder what made that magic number 600. Was that around the time when he was giving out $600 stimulus checks? I don't know, but... <laughs> well, but, I um, believe... I believe that's the IRS's number, right? At at um oh, for like self employed person. Right. Yeah. For a self employed independent contractor, you are L are required to file and report taxes if you made more than six hundred dollars in income. So I'm guessing, but I can assume that that may be why. Okay. Everybody in the comments is saying they don't see this thing passing. GOP is not gonna support it. Um we'll see. We'll definitely see, but the name of the bill um, is the American Families Plan. So, I mean, it's the American Families Plan has a bunch of things in it, but this piece that we're discussing is within it. But yeah, it's a part of the American Families Plan. And this was, this article was back in, in April. I don't necessarily know why it um, has resurfaced and blown up, but, um, you know, people have been talking about it and, and here we are discussing it as well to see... Uh, what would happen? No, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Boy, these, these, these kids. <laughs> Ryan, what's going on? But no, this, this has been a good discussion. Um, I think the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway, like I've been saying this whole time, is to definitely clean up yeah. your accounting, clean up your documentation around your business, right? As a business owner, you know, it's our responsibility to do these things whether it's on us personally or we bring someone in to do that is it's so important because it has so many benefits obviously whenever tax time comes you're already prepared you already know the damage that's going to happen and then secondly you know your numbers each month and you're able to grow your business based off of that right a lot of us we run our businesses off of just feeling top of our head. <laughs> right off the top of our head like we're making decisions based off of feeling we're, we're freestyling essentially for all you hip-hop fans right people we're freestyling our, our business versus looking at the numbers and saying okay this is what's going on so therefore these are the decisions that need to be made and mill prep says this bill is a cpa dream <laughs> is a cpa what she dream? says a CPA's oh. <laughs> dream Oh, um, you could, you could yes and, and no. Yeah, I think it, it could be a nightmare too because, you know, it can bring a lot of unnecessary, like, man, we've been hammered the past couple of years when it comes to tax season and, and just uh, work in general, you know. But, you know, it, it's definitely going to obviously increase business, I would think, but, you know, um, I always say these things should have been, these things should already be done anyways, you know, but I do also understand that, you know, it's not free. It costs money, you know, and, and it takes time out of your schedule, but this is one of the most important things in your business that I feel can really help you excel and grow. Does anybody have any specific questions that they wanted to ask before we round up? Let me know in the comment section and we can get to it. But I appreciate everybody that jumped on. It's a lot of people yes. that jumped on. Hi. It's way more people that, that jump on. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi to the people. <laughs> okay, Erica wants to come on real quick. Let's let's bring Erica on All for right. a moment. All right, well, does that mean I'm leaving? Bye, guys. No, no, you can oh. stay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Erica, what's going on? I got Hello, Erica. Nice to meet you. Hi. Oh, you're on baby duty, too. Okay. I'm on baby <laughs> duty, too. I had to change. Good. Yeah. The whole nine. I, I see. But, yeah. So, so, what's your thoughts on all this? Have you read up on it? Have you had a chance to, like, dive into it? To read it? it? Yeah. So, from what I got from it, um, basically they are trying to pass it. It hasn't officially passed. So I personally don't think it's going to pass only because 
there's just a lot of things that come into play. Like it, first of all, goes against our Fourth Amendment rights. Mm. Um, you know, so um, that's key. And then also we still have a chance to, you know, contact our Congress or Senate um, to challenge it. So, you know, that's huge. Mm. You know, that's important, I think. Um, only because, yeah, I mean, that's going to be pretty huge. And I think it's going to take effect for a lot of middle class and lower class people. And, of course, small business owners when it comes to reporting additional income because of course we don't like to report all of our income let's be <laughs> honest <laughs> um so but just to you know clarify because i know a lot of people were thinking like it's 600 every transaction but to my knowledge it's 600 anything 600 over 600 in your bank account then the bank will report basically everything towards the end of the year so kind of like you're, your w-2 you're talking about aggregate like in total in totality so in total so like kind of so, like an annual report yeah so if i have let's say and this is for both business accounts and personal accounts right right so it's for personal and business yes so okay i have let's say a million dollar business and i pay myself two hundred thousand dollars as a w2 a business, right? so now right. that two hundred thousand is going to my personal account and then let's say my bills are fifty thousand, and I decide to take one hundred and fifty grand out of my personal account and do whatever it is that I want to do with it. So that one fifty would be reported to the IRS. Like, hey, hey guys, light bulb! Mm -hmm. This person withdrew one hundred and fifty grand from the IRS. Right. From um, but then that two hundred thousand W two is already reported as a W two, so technically it wouldn't be um, reported because it's outflow and inflow so they probably wouldn't report that like how would they know what is payroll and what this whole thing is crazy when you think about it but i'm sure though they have software that'll figure all that stuff yeah out. so i mean this is when a good cpa comes into play right right so right right have your ducks in order but then what is challenging is you know not a lot of people have the money to afford a good accountant or just a good CPA that's knowledgeable when it comes to this stuff. So right. I would just, I mean, I think it's really important nowadays to just, you know, like I've always said, not to go to just anyone to file your tax return because I think, you know, with the IRS, they're just getting smarter um, with, you know, reporting um, and just, you know, figuring out who to audit, who not to audit, um, you know, we see it all day. You know, most of the clients that we have um, are due to unreporting issues. So, um, like I mentioned, you know, the biggest thing is not withholding oh, you that, you know, on like your paychecks as well. So, again, you know, the whole bank account thing, I think that's just another form of tactic for them to get their money back from all the free money that they dished out the past two years. I mean, let's you know, think about it, all the stimulus money, um, PPP loans, just everything. I mean, that was just to help the economy. But ultimately, they want their money back. So this is just another, you know, good way for the IRS to say, hey, yeah, we loaned you this money, but we want it back. Are, some way aren't we going to pay it back? We're, I mean, except the PPP, we're, we're going to pay all this other stuff back, right? No? Yeah, I mean, it's a strategic move, you know. I, I read between the lines, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, like, accountants and CPAs are always going to figure out different how to go things, around right? it. Right. right. Well, so I, I, mean, I don't want to say how to go around it, but, like, you know, how to do things in a way to where your tax bill won't be as crazy as exactly. if you were just freestyling it. And I want to give a shout out to I am Wendy Marie for um, buying a badge. I appreciate this. This goes to my children that that are hungry. You know, you see them in the comments. I saw that. I was like, yeah. did you really write that as his title? <laughs> They're hungry. I mean, what? <laughs> kids are always hungry. Y'all, y'all know that. I don't have kids, so right. <laughs> but you have kids and nephews. Stop it. I do. I do. <laughs> Um, no. yeah. I, I think this goes plays into also them just um, 
creating this huge audit department. And I think mm -hmm. that this is going to be just a, a, a portion of what they're going to be auditing, right? They're going to audit right. all the SBA PPPs. They're going to audit all the EIDL. Oh, yeah. Now they're auditing statements, right? They have to feed this new audit department with work that's also going to generate revenue for them because IRS may be our federal taxation, you know, but they're still a corporate entity. They operate as a corporation. They have staff, they have employees, they have overhead. And now they have this whole underreporting department that really has increased over the last five to 10 years. You guys know that. How many returns went to underreporting? Oh, Just yeah. errors department be, um, for no reason. There was no error on their return this year. You guys know that. So now they created this huge underreporting department that is really going to start and, and transfer into a huge audit department that's going to audit all of these small businesses, all of these loans, and all these. They want to go dollar for dollar. They're going to find a way to do it. Um, I truly believe they're going to find a way to do it. And I truly believe over the course of the next few years, there may be a lot of even businesses shut down because I mean, they may have, you know, inflated their numbers to get higher loan amounts. They're going to, they're going to find some way to track a lot of this down. There's going to be a lot of businesses that probably will end up shutting down, to be honest. Like, they, they already, a lot that did, but there's going to be a lot more that's right. and even stuff like this. I don't know if they did it in, in your guys' states, but here in New York, they just cut off um, unemployment. And, you know, unemployment come from our state tax departments. However, um, when this unemployment stops, how many business owners were self-employed? Sorry, my thing went off. How many business owners? were self-employed but never filed taxes were able to run their businesses and still collect unemployment and now they have this unemployment coming in because they're not working but they're still operating and running their businesses with unemployment income and guess what this is going to happen at some point when unemployment doesn't feed them anymore how are they going to still run these businesses they're going to probably close and at some point when they get issued a 1099 and possibly maybe they opened the Shopify account this year, and now they have a 1099K, guess who's going to owe back unemployment? State tax department. They're going to owe a portion of that back. Um, so I just think there's a lot of things that are going to unfold that is going to make, like he said, our job as accountants harder. But I think that us, you know, staying in, and like in the front of the current news and just being able to help educate clients will also position us for uh, to be able to be more successful in helping these smaller businesses get educated, get organized, and get their fit together a lot better sooner than later before they have to regret it. And probably even pick up a lot of new clients that are regretting it. And, you know, we can be like, well, we told you so. Well, when you right. called us two years ago. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Um, Here's another thing, too, that's a little bit related but unrelated. Um, how many of you that are listening have a Shopify business? Have your business is on Shopify, right? Uh, we were in Shopify recently for a client. Well, actually, a client um, told me on Monday that Shopify has a uh, setup to where it can tell you which states you now have a responsibility to collect and report sales tax to, right? So if Shopify is doing this, what happens next? Where do you think that information yes. that is, is going? It's yeah, going straight state. to that state. Yeah. So and the same thing happened with PayPal, to too. And that's the last thing you want to mess with is the state. The so state now is you way have, worse than the IRS. 100%. So now you have tax issues with the IRS, and you have each of these states saying, hey, I need my piece. You know, <laughs> you should have been collecting sales tax in my state, but you weren't. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's insane. Man, shout out GMK Tay for the badge. I appreciate you, bro. Huh? It's kind of a good thing, though, honestly, though, because not a lot of people are knowledgeable with what states require sales tax anyway. So I think it's a, it's like a plus. It's like half and half to me. I feel like it, it could be a win, but then it also could be, of course, a loss because it's like, dang, I got to really nip things in the bud with, you know, just tax in general, you know? Um, but it, it, but I mean, at the end of the day, it protects you as a business owner too. I feel like, 
There's you a lot. You have to them for other programs. Like, look at how you missed out on being able to qualify for some of these good, great programs. New York has a grant program that, you know, they can get <gasps> a grant program that if they showed a loss for 2020 versus 2019, they can get $25,000, you know, $30,000. That's granted to run their business as long as they're located in the state of New York and have been operating and can prove said loss. But... A lot of a lot of people can't even qualify. They extended the time frame because they weren't getting a lot of applications because a lot of people don't qualify. Um, it's insane. It's it's crazy times, crazy times right now. Mary. And um, you know, even for a lot of accountants, if you if you're not prepared to take on this amount of workload, right? It's going to it's going to be crazy for you too. So it's crazy on both sides, right? Because there's going to be more people that are like, "Hey, I, I need your services," and um, you got to get your your act together and make sure that you can help. If you're going to take on business, make sure that you can help everybody. And then the people who are in business, y'all got to be aware of the IRS taxes that could you know possibly be on your case. And if you collect sales tax or are supposed to collect sales tax, that's another situation that you have to be aware of you know so it's a lot of compliance stuff that needs to be um taken care of you know and if you're a business owner and you and your business is growing you may not have the time to do that so that's going to be in on, on the back burner right so that's why it's important to really um contact someone that can help you yes definitely yeah. mm-hmm. now we can we can preach a lot more the importance of account <laughs> and maybe people will listen and pay attention right mm-hmm. well people are listening people are on here right now anybody have any questions for us faithfuls faithfuls king glow says hello beautiful people hello hello hi i don't see the new comments i don't know Some... you don't see the comments no Mommy, the know. last comment i saw was Lord Jean Stephanie. The last one I saw was pretty and pricey. That says Lord. Yeah. Really? And- yeah. <laughs> pretty and pricey just said yes. So important. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you that are listening are working with an accountant right now? I was and just about to say are, that. How many of you are not working with somebody? <laughs> and based upon everything that we've discussed right now. What's the biggest thing that you feel you need to do within your business in order to, uh, well, financially within your business to make sure that your business is in a good position, in a good shape, and you don't, you're not susceptible to any of this stuff that is coming? Let me see. People are still joining in. Um, but yeah, it's Erica. Talk about talk about your uh, tax resolution. Really, Keisha. Keisha bought it back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't see the Oh, uh, Trinity Price said, "Not me. I don't have an account yet, but I need to get one very soon." Let's talk. Uh, Erica, talk about what you do. Well, I am a tax resolution specialist. Um. So pretty much I help people who owe the IRS. Um, So I get to the bottom of the issue. Um, We have a thorough discovery process, which I call the IRS on, you know, their behalf to figure out what exactly is going on. Um, You know, current balances, missing tax returns, the whole nine, um, civil penalties, everything. Um, And just figuring out what we can ultimately do for you. Um, whether it's an offer and compromise, um, a currently non collectible status, a status, and then, or we can negotiate, you know, a lower monthly payment plan for you guys. Um, so that's what, you know, our extension to Ethan's business, um, which, you know, has been doing fairly well. Um, we've definitely settled some great accounts so far. Um, we had a client that owed about 300000 and she no longer has a balance. Nice. That's a huge yes. win. That's a huge win. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. you. Yes. It took a while, <laughs> but, you know, these things take a while. Um, you know, I know it's 
like antsy, you know, trying to hear back from the IRS or just waiting for things to process. But ultimately, you know, it goes in your favor, um, ultimately. So, you know, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, we settled another account that, um, you know, owed a substantial amount as well. And we got it dropped down, you know, but uh, things took a left turn. But, you know, ultimately, um, you know, we have a lot of, you know, people that, you know, either go this way or that way when it comes to, you know, deciding what's best for them in terms of, you know, what they want to agree to. So, yeah. So I think we, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of things coming with that. But, yeah. Anything That's awesome. Else? <laughs> I would love to definitely have a conversation with you as well. Okay, um, yeah, about possibly adding an extension. Okay, perfect. Yeah, off. Yeah, connect with me and then we can talk more. Yeah. Wait, definitely. Don. Don says, Erica, do you help when the IRS owes us money? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, Don's pretty cool, man. He, he's a cool guy. He's he's funny. Yeah, it's Don's a really that reaches out to me. I've had friends reach out to me now. Um, shoot, I'm helping my mom. <laughs> I mean, everyone. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people have tax issues. I mean, it's a pretty common issue now. Yeah. But I'm just glad I'm in a situation where I'm pretty much, you know, very knowledgeable when it comes to, you know, with the IRS because a lot of people... You know, they get these notices and they just honestly really don't know what to do. Um, so, you know, contacting us and really getting a better understanding of what this particular notice means, what do you need to do, um, that's something that we can definitely help out with. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you'd be surprised how many people don't understand these notices. And it's like sometimes a simple notice, you left off income in the amount of now you owe an additional. Right. They're like, I got this notice and I don't know what it means. Did right. You read to the third page where the details are. Well, right. no, actually, past the first page, I didn't understand. And it's just like, reading is, is will help, but they, I think everything with IRS, even when you do ID verification, even when clients do ID verification calls and they get that letter, um, they ask clients, hey, what was your, you know, federal withholdings? A client isn't going to know that. Customer isn't going to know that. And so I think the way that they do their verbiage also, they need to learn how to simplify things, maybe just a little bit more for the average American to understand. And they do. Um, it's just a lot of us don't know how to read it. I think the IRS is getting better with breaking down like what exactly the notice means. But again, like, let's be honest, we get these notices, we read the first page and we see that notice of intent um, to levy or, you know, just a garnishment. And that's the only thing that we see. And we're just seeing red and we're just saying, okay, what do we need to do? Um, so that's huge, you know, because like typically like on the second or third page, that's where they break down what the issue is and what wasn't reported and so forth. Um, a lot of the times it's, you know, you're not reporting your Vanguard account. You're not reporting, you know, a distribution from an IRA account or 401k account. Um, a lot of clients that I've came across are audit clients where, you know, they're reporting all these expenses for their business. But at the same time, it's like, do you have actual receipts for these businesses? So a lot of that comes into play. Um, and just knowing what's acceptable to the IRS and what's not acceptable. Um, and just being a little bit more knowledgeable when it comes to that. And I think that's where, you know, Ephraim comes in and he's oh awesome with that. That's his area. Um, so I think, yeah, just like I mentioned, having a great accountant and just someone who is actually knowledgeable when it comes to, um, the IRS is, is huge and is very important because I am noticing a lot of CPAs, they say they know, but they really don't know what, you know, to do. And they're giving misinformation, which is ultimately messing up you because you're responsible, the taxpayer, not the CPA. We're not responsible. So yeah. like, it's up to you to follow up and, you know, make sure that you are either reaching out to them or, you know, hiring someone like us to reach out for you to get, you know, to the bottom of things. 
And you'd be surprised how many IRS, how many um, agents the IRS are bringing on this year, expanding their customer support uh, centers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these agents don't know what they're doing, what no, they're talking I, about. And yeah. they're just reading off of a database protocol sheet. Right. And we've done hundreds of IRS calls. Between this year and a whole bunch of stuff stuck in processing, we're very aggressive with getting everyone cleared up. Um, because, you know, our revenue depends on it. So we, that's kind of why we are more aggressive on our business model. But even today we were on an IRS call for four hours with a client. The agent can't, you know, he's trying to help, but he's giving such generalized information. He does. I can tell he's new. He doesn't, he doesn't know really know season. what to do next. He, how am right. I supposed to be calling the IRS themselves right. to get my <laughs> next steps? to figure out the pieces of information to help my client. It's like a puzzle. I got to take what he's giving me, what he reads in his system. Then I have to pry and ask him additional questions because he's not even there. Oh yeah. They, all they say is, Oh, favorite line, call back in 10 weeks. Just give us a call back. And maybe the next agent will know. And I, and I force, I'm like, no, what do you see on the account now? What was the last time it was updated? Da, 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 da. And it's like, they don't, it's like, I feel like I want to contact them and say, hey, how are you training these people? You know, a lot of times right. I could do a lot of, and you probably you, you know, you probably do so much conversation with them, speaking to so many different agents. That's when you start to build your level of experience of how to assist clients with the IRS. And I just did a live yeah. yesterday while I was actually on hold with the IRS talking about dealing with the IRS and how a lot of even new tax professionals now, or even tax professionals that have been around for five to 10 years, they don't even put that into their practice and their business model. So just I, just, people, yeah, I just spoke with someone who is very seasoned, he said he's been working with them for about 12 years. Um, and he pretty much said for the past, you know, years since COVID hit, they've been hiring rapidly and they've been doing nothing but training as to why, uh, you know, wait times to get a hold of them have been longer than usual. And like you mentioned, when you get an agent, they're just not knowledgeable because they're still in training themselves. Um, yes. The training process for the IRS alone is a four to six month training. So you can just wow. imagine um, the extent of the training on top of, you know, the, the backlog that they do have with them being 40 million, um, people behind which is 2019 alone which is nuts um i can just only imagine so i mean it's one of those things you just have to be patient with them and what i've noticed is being patient with the agent regardless of how their tone is with you um you know to get the information that you need and honestly if you get a snobby agent or just an agent that's not willing to work with you I simply hang up and get someone else <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, yeah, because I mean, sometimes you just, you can't get past that, you know? So, um, dealing with this for the past almost 10 years of, you know, just reaching out to the IRS, I've just learned to have a lot of patience. If you don't have patience, it's not for you, honestly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. yeah. No, this is, this has been great. Um, we Ethan's trying to get to that. Ethan's trying to get to that. That versus, I know me too. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <do> that. <laughs> Make sure no. you download the video and send it to me, please. I would like to post it. Sure, sure. No, definitely. Um, and make sure you connect with me so I can add you. In the yes, post. I will. Yeah, connect. I, I don't see your at. So definitely, yes, connect with me. I'm gonna drop my at handle in the comments for anyone that does would like to that would like to connect with me. Also, I still can't see me. comments. Mine's is stuck. So, mine was stuck for like 45 minutes. I'm still at the last lord. <laughs> well, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> like that was like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> well, not. Wow. I appreciate y'all for coming on. You know, I appreciate of everybody. Else that well, thank you for on. having me. Most definitely, most definitely. I'll let y'all go watch Even the verses. My dad on. Can't talk mess no more. With the baby <laughs> in my arm and everything, you know, multitasking. I'm still I sending emails you, out. I don't know, I know. how you, you, you do it, but you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wrap up my work day. I'm ready to go home and have dinner. I'll All right. Well, it was good talking to you guys. Definitely. Y'all have a good rest of the night. You too. you too. Don't forget to hit download. Not just post the IGTV. I just download. <laughs> okay. Because I keep forgetting to do that. And I don't have the video now. <laughs>
All right. All right. Bye. Bye.